guys, thanks for watching another episode of The Cinematic Show. I'm your host, Jordan Ross, and I'm joined by a very special guest, Pinhead himself, the star of the latest entry in the Hellraiser franchise, Hellraiser Judgment, Paul Taylor. So, Hi. Thanks so much for having me over to do this video. Absolutely. There's hell to pay. Paul and I go way back. A little over 10 years ago, we were in Alamo the Musical together. Yeah. Before we get started, we are going to do a giveaway a Hellraiser Judgment oh, Blu-ray. That looks great. And Paul is going to sign it right here on video so you know that he's mm. the one that actually signed it. Be sure to watch the entire video so you can see what you need to do in order to win this autographed Hellraiser Judgment Blu-ray. So I figured we could just sit down and talk about your new movie. I have some Hellraiser mm. questions first, but then yeah. I have some other broader like horror questions. So cool. what was the audition process like for this movie and how did you find out you got the part? What was your reaction? I received uh, an email from my agency saying uh -huh. we want to put you on tape. And this is a list of other actors too for different roles. And the role that I was being put on tape for was the auditor okay. for a movie called Judgment. Yeah. That's all it was called. With with a description that ended with into a spiraling maze of horror. And right there, I was like, that sounds like that could be a hell of a thing. Yeah. Mm. So anyway, I get the auditor sides. Which is a good like character. I watched it the other day. Yeah. Character. Let's just dive in, shall we? And I read his first line, something like, come in, we have such sights to show you. And I'm like, this is a Hellraiser movie. Yeah. Oh, my God. And I'm like. This is perfect. This is like a middle management weirdo. Yeah. I've played this kind of guy before. I can nail this. But then I get a personal email and we'd like to put you on tape for Pinhead because Doug Bradley's not coming back. And I have this reaction like, there's no way I'm going to get that part. That's good. And then I stopped myself. And this is like, this is the opportunity that I've been waiting for and, and hoping for and meditating for. And this is the kind of film role that I just really need to give it my best audition. Yeah. So I had four days to get off the book and I decided it would be the best film audition I'd ever done in my life. And um, turns out it was. I took this. That's well, awesome. I took my Nika version. This is a yeah. more expensive version that's been given to me since I got the parts. I took my pinhead action figure because I'm a real fan of yeah. Hellraiser. And I had this yeah. since. Y'all should see there's all sorts of Hellraiser collectibles and, and stuff up there. It's really yeah. cool. Yeah, it's. I think I have all of them. I do yeah. have all of them. I nailed the auditor. Then I nailed pinhead. and um, No pun intended. No pun intended. But there was no callback. The tapes were sent to the director, Gary J. Tunnicliffe mm -hmm. in, in LA. I was his first choice. I was the executive's first choice. I was the... Um, the studio's first choice, basically. But Bob Weinstein, who owns the company, okay, yeah, it was you know he has final words. So they sent him my audition tape, and apparently he was having technical difficulties, so he couldn't he couldn't watch my audition tape. Yeah. So I still couldn't. I mean, it was weeks. It was yeah. a couple weeks. So I'm sure um, it felt like years. It did. Yeah, because I knew that all it was going to take was Bob Weinstein saying yes. So one Sunday morning, I'm sitting here in this very room where we are, yeah. in my dining room, and the casting director sends me a text saying, hey, are you up? I said, yes. He said, welcome to the movie, Pinhead. Wow. I bet that was really surreal to like It was see that. surreal because, I mean, Pinhead's always been my favorite 80s horror icon. Yeah. His intelligence, his sexiness, his, you know, just Shakespearean qualities. My reaction was I did a happy dance and then I... And then I, you know, started Got getting, to work. getting ready. Yeah. Yeah. I can't imagine how you get into the mindset of like this soulless, this, you know, evil entity. Yeah. So like, how did you get into Pinhead's like skin and, and kind of live in that character to prepare for it? Yeah. Well, I knew I had to start with what had come before me from Doug Bradley and what had been created there. So that was going to, of course, be a, a British accent. The stillness and the intensity that, that Doug Bradley always had, the, just the presence that he brought to the yeah. character. At the time, I didn't have all of the movies on DVD, so I purchased the ones I didn't have, and I started watching them religiously for, I don't know, a couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. Gary and I would have phone conversations. He said, we agreed that it was time to just start doing my own thing. So mm -hmm. I put away those. I maybe st I started watching some other movies where the villains were extremely intense and you know evil like ray fines in that schindler's list and tony uh, hopkins the silence of anthony the lambs. hopkins tony yeah. my friend tony right in silence of the lambs that kind of thing that was external work that i was you know research i guess they call it research but basically i had to go into my own history mm -hmm. of with with pain and suffering and darkness and evil and revisit some places that I had been actually fairly recently with my own, like I had some health issues. I had mm -hmm. hepatitis C for several years, but I had been through that sitting in the dark, lonely house, isolating myself, just 
so depressed and feeling sick all the time. You know, we, we've all suffered. We've yeah, all suffered sure. and been sad and depressed and angry in our lives. So, yeah. so I drew on what I had. I spent a lot of time in this house with all the lights out. It's not the best neighborhood. And mm -hmm. at night, it can be a little sketchy, a little scary. Um, even during the day, I mean, I hear gunshots and stuff. I would put on my heavy boots and, and my dress in my black and just... And and I started took up smoking because I thought it was going to like lower my voice. Yeah, I will never pick up. Were you able cigarette. to quit easily? Oh yeah, I hated it. I yeah. hate smoking. But it was good for what I was doing. I was like, you know, inhaling a little death every day. You yeah, know, it was it's got in somehow. Yeah, I'm taking walks uh -huh. in the in the neighborhood places I would not normally go, especially yeah. at night. Yeah, and just I'm walking and I'm just like nobody can mess with me. I'm pinhead. And, I mean, I didn't do it like that. Yeah, it was more internal. But, it was yeah, like exactly. Really, really meant it, and it was about. No fear. Because I knew that the makeup was going to take care of it. I mean, when yeah. you look like that, you it's, have no reason to be afraid anyway. Yeah. Unless you're on a film set and blah, blah, blah. But internally, it was about no anxiety, no fear, no, uh -huh. no, no, nothing. Speaking of of past Hellraisers, there was Doug Bradley. And, and who was the other one? I, for, I forget his name. Stephen Smith Collins. And he was just in the one right just before you. Just right? Okay, cool. Yeah. He wasn't necessarily welcomed by the fans with open arms you yes know, he, he was met correct. with a lot of hostility so i was wondering yeah. what your your experience has been like with the diehard fans oh, of this franchise see that's the biggest thing that i was worried about yeah the first thing that gary tunnicliffe said to me when i flew out to la to get my head cast done he said sit down i'm gonna talk to you he told me the history of doug the history of you know the reason doug wasn't doing it and he went into how the fans were going to react I yeah mean, i already had this the odds the, the cards stacked against me. yeah we finished the movie two years ago so for two years that's my biggest worry yeah um because if they don't accept me then you know forget it so yeah gonna, it's, you know if i'm not good as pinhead then it, i'm not going to be pinhead again or i'm going to be a joke so what's been wonderful is that many many of the hardcore doug bradley is the only pinhead hellraiser fans have come forward and said, you know what, you're not Doug Bradley, but you're also good. You know, you're yeah. you're also, you know, we accept you as a pinhead. We accept you as a new hell priest. Some that's even cool. like you are the new hell priest. So, um, you know, that's that's got to feel good. Oh, it's such a relief. Yeah, yeah, it feels good every time I read something. It's like, oh something good anyway it's kind of like with james bond you know there's people exactly. have their favorites and and yeah with a character like that though there's going to be different actors that come in to do it sean connery's my personal favorite james bond but i yeah. love daniel craig too oh yeah so, he's great he's different he's yeah so he's such an athlete yeah exactly you know, he's hardcore he's a real he's a brutal james bond and it's a totally different it's a totally different decade it's yeah. a different era exactly you know things have to change yeah so. and if you don't like the newer ones you can just keep watching the older ones yeah. instead of getting so you know people get so mad and so you know possessive silly, of these, well, of these sorry, movies and stuff i think it's but, kind of a um a first world problem thing it to is. get mad about what do you think sets hellraiser judgment apart from some of the other um sequels that weren't as well received i think what sets it apart is gary tonicliffe's vision since he was a kid has loved Clive Barker's books yeah. and movies. And the reason he moved to LA was because he saw Hellraiser. His goal was to bring back that Clive Barker flavor yeah. in his film judgment. And he did it. He knows what he's doing. And, and it's like a more expensive fan film. And it is a Hellraiser film. That's yeah. another thing. Some of these other sequels have just been scripts that the studio has, has gone, okay, we can take this script. We can make it a Hellraiser shoehorn movie. Pinhead yeah. in there. And we can call it Hellraiser Hellraiser film and keep the franchise going. This film is an attempt to get the franchise back on track. Speaking of sequels, is there any word on another potential sequel? Or have you like talked to anyone about the possibility of that? You or... know, the way Judgment ends. Yeah. It's like, yeah. well, that's a cliffhanger. Okay, yeah. what happens now? Which is great. Yeah. Now what? Is it over? What's going to... You know, there's... there's do we anyway, reboot? Do like, we reboot? Yeah. I'm in contact with Gary and he has ideas. Yeah. But... It's Hollywood. Yeah, you, know? you never Until know. Until somebody comes forward and, you're and on says, set. we want you to do this. <laughs> yeah. um, you know, it could be another five years yeah. before that happens. Yeah. Yeah, there's there's talk, but there's no there's no studio calling me yeah. and saying, we want you to come back and play Pinhead again. Yet. You know, yet. yet. I feel like this is a, a franchise that, unlike, you know, some of the other classic, you know, slasher horror movies, mm -hmm. 
it hasn't really gotten its fair shot, you know, because the first yeah. one is great. And then after that, it's like they haven't really put as much effort into this franchise yeah, as, the you know, been... with the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. They keep rebooting that every couple of years, like with huge budgets. Yeah. You know, Halloween, they're doing another reboot of that. Na- and Nightmare, like on that. Street. Nightmare on Elm Street. Yeah. So I really wish that Hellraiser would get that same treatment. And, and maybe same... it will. You know, yeah. this movie could be a shift towards kind of Yeah, jump, jump started a little bit. Speaking of other mm. horror movie franchises, I think I know who your number one's going to be. But if you could rank these movie monsters or bad guys, okay? Pinhead, Freddy, Michael Myers, Jason, and Leatherface. You can start from worst to best. Leatherface is five for me. Okay. I don't know why. He doesn't really have the supernatural element that the other ones have, yeah. where he's more of just this big brute. With yeah. the chainsaw. My second is gonna be Jason. Sorry. I, okay, no, He's I awesome. could, I think I think that He's would be awesome. Yeah. But those movies, they're kind of <clears throat> just a bunch of horny teenagers. Very campy. Getting slaughtered in a yeah. camp. I'm not making enemies here. I love all of them. I love yeah, they're all, all good. We're not saying any of them are bad. <laughs> Three, I'm gonna say, is gonna be Michael Myers. I was about to say that. John Carpenter's work and yeah. that theme and the... Oh, the yeah. <sighs> those soundtracks were so great. Uh-huh. Love Michael Myers. You know, some of his movies have been fantastic. Some have not, you know, I've had to turn yeah. off. You know who I'm going to end up number one with? Yeah, of course. You got to know. Yeah. Freddy is my number two. Yeah. Freddy's great. I really want to play Freddy. Because that was my next Freddy. question is which oh my God. iconic horror movie bad guy would you want to play other than Pinhead? And not, not just be, limited to those. It but would any be Freddy. Other. Because Freddy. I think I could do a really good job. If you look at the 50s and even the 40s and, and, and the lawn chains. They all, and Christopher the, Lee Christopher, even played all of them. All yeah. All the different Boris Karloff. Yeah. So there's no reason that an actor can't. No, no. Except, do it with the, except next... the audience is going, no! We yeah. don't want it. We, you can't have that. So my number one's Pinhead because it has to be. Right. It yeah. always was, actually. It yeah. always was. That's really cool. So now it's even more number one yeah i can make chains out of nowhere moving. to hook you and tear yeah. you apart just standing there really yeah if they all were put in a room and had a death match who do you think would win ah. i feel like leatherface would probably be the first one to go because he's the most human yeah yeah he probably would because he's a madman with a chainsaw and he's I think he's stupid. Yeah. Isn't he yeah, stupid? Yeah. He, he can be disarmed. Yeah, exactly. He's... Freddy and Pinhead, like they're really clever. Yeah. And Michael Myers and Jason, they can match his like brute strength, but yeah. they also have the supernatural aspect too. So mm-hmm. I feel like he would be the first to go. With Freddy, it's kind of like you have to, what, give everyone a sleeping potion so you can yeah. get into their dreams? Yeah. I mean, that's how he kills you is in right? your dreams. So that's... Does Pinhead even that's sleep? That's a tough one. Yeah. The immortality. I mean, Michael Myers and Jason are immortal, right? They weren't, but maybe they always were. They've kind of become right. So how do you kill them? Yeah. Some battles would be more awesome to watch than others. Exactly. Just a couple more basic ones. What's your favorite horror movie and what's the scariest movie you've ever seen? They aren't necessarily the same, but they might be. Oh, you're right. I think they actually are the same. Okay. No, they're not the same. My favorite horror movie is The Shining. Nice. And that's because that's definitely way Jack. up there. Yeah. And because, uh, um, the, oh my God, Kubrick. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Sorry, Stephen King, but that's like he's watching. Yeah. Right. Yeah, um, he's a big fan of my channel. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure. yeah. So good. But I think the scariest one is The Exorcist. I was about to personally. say that for me. Yeah. And many people say that. Yeah. I mean, it is <clears throat> freaking terrifying. The only thing that doesn't scare me is the head turning around because it's not real enough looking yeah. for me. Movies about demonic possession uh-huh. are terrifying. They really are. Uh, Exorcism of Emily Rose is one that so really good. got me. All of those types of movies really, really When they're well out. done. Yeah. yeah. I mean, there's so many bad ones out there, but when they're well done and aren't just a rip off of something else. Exactly. And, um, I mean, I loved the first Conjuring movie. Yeah, me too. Okay. Did you see um, The Hallow? Who directed that Nature one? Nature Has a Dark Side. Corin Hardy. Okay. I want to work with this guy. Yeah. It is so good. Watch it. Sorry. Yeah. Check that movie out. Also, Hellraiser Judgment, all the other movies that we mentioned. Um, Trying to think, is there any other, anything else you want to plug? Any other projects you have coming up? I'm going to be in a remake of Ghost House that's going to be filming. Really? uh, In LA this summer sometime. That's cool. Playing the Grim Reaper. I did a cameo last, we shot it several months ago for a, um, a Christmas horror movie called Sick for Toys okay. that will be distributed this year yeah. around the Christmas season. Watch Hellraiser Judgment. 
Speaking of that, if you want this Blu-ray autographed by Pinhead himself, I'll have all of the instructions in the description section, but you have to follow both of us on all of our social media accounts and subscribe to this channel. So once you do that, leave a comment, let me know that you did it all so I can confirm it, and then you will be entered in the giveaway. So go to the description section, look at all the details, and enter the giveaway because this is a really, really cool prize. Thanks so much for watching this video. Thank you for having me here today. My pleasure, Jordan. It was awesome catching up. Be sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel, comment down below if you've seen Hellraiser Judgment, and let us know what you thought. Unless you didn't like it, then don't even bother. Yeah, if you're yeah. going to be a troll, just you know, yeah, keep it yourself. Ex exactly. Thanks again. Until next time, I'm Jordan Ross, and this is Paul Taylor. See ya.